for those of you who are new and you know you don't really know my story I'm gonna kind of tell you you know when I was young I went to private school um, I'm gonna skip over a lot of stuff and just give you the general the gist of it um, I've been in the psych ward about um, eight times depending on how you count it. if you count you know I'm kind of confused by myself about myself because I've counted being transferred, you know, one side, you know, going to the cycle, then being transferred to another place. I said, you know, that's two times, you know, so I kind of lost track. So I'll say around eight times, right? The real number, probably about six or seven, you know, depending on how you, how you count it. But I've been to the cycle a lot of times. Um, first time, I believe I was probably around 15 or 16. And my dad and my uncle helped me down in the back seat of the car when my mom drove me. Um, to the psych ward and basically they accused me of having temporal lobe seizures and 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 you know walking away you know wandering away but really I went next door to see the neighbor the neighbor's daughter with the neighbor you know <laughs> she's a neighbor too so you know and we were about the same age you know and so we talked it was kind of later at night I come back in and my dad and my uncle pretty much you know grabbed me and fucking you know take me to the car and they one of them sits on my legs or something and they, they take me to the psych ward and the people there told me that they're not supposed to do that whatever but then they they agreed to take uh, to admit me so then after that you know always going to the psych I probably went to the psych ward you know, once or two times after that argued with my parents you know the same kind of you know smoking weed on the roof you know I'd rap out loud smoke weed on the roof and ironically Tupac had a sign you know, you can catch us on the roof or behind the stairs. I'm reminiscing on the time we shared. A lot of, you know, Tupac makes it clear of what's going on. And recently I saw, you know, Geraldo and Fox News are, you know, are being yelled at by the protesters there saying, you know, we're not mad. We're not crazy. You know, they try to play black people out who have a, a good reason to be upset. It's crazy, you know, oh, these crazy black people yelling at us again, you know, and they smile, and mm, you know, they're crazy, you know, that, that's what white people t typically do, and that's what they've done to me my whole life, and, it, you know, they completely put me at odds with them. At first, it was just at odds with mental health. At first, I didn't see it, as, you know, I, I saw society as corrupt, as evil, but my anger, you know, was basically aimed at racists, the Illuminati, and it's the mental health system. Okay, I said these are the these are the problems of society that these people don't listen and they just take me there for any petty reason just because my parents said so and you know they roll with it with you know all wicked as hell you know they're like sharks just waiting you know and then I I, I there was this Illuminati I believe was controlling the world and I, I obviously would be proven right through my research years later and then there was what racist in society skinheads KKK racist cops you know racist teachers I've had just you know. These, these are the, the things that I really hated about society growing up. So anyway, since then, I've been to the psych ward many times over petty shit, arguing with my parents. You know, one time I hit the wall when I was arguing with my dad because I, I had come out the shower. And, you know, I yelled in the shower about something I was upset about. You know, it's, imagine being upset about something and then somebody confronts you very angry. Why you're upset? Why you're upset? You know, it's like when you throw things around. Ironically, you know, the time where a guy tried to stab me and he barely cut me at all, you know, but... You know, he, he got a little bit, and so it's a story for itself, you know, but he was, I confronted him when he was upset about something, about losing to me at sparring and me rubbing in his face. You know, I, I beat him 10 to 0. And so, you know, it, it's logical. When people are upset and you fucking confront them, <laughs> of course they're going to be mad, you know? So anyway, a lot of times I went to the psych ward for petty shit, and then there came, and then it was a time when I was arguing my my uh, ex girlfriend, and during the trial, um, I was very upset, reasonably so, very stressed out, and they took me to the psych ward for some petty ass shit, and then later, you know, after this is probably three or four times, you know, three, four, five times by that point, and then later on, you know, almost about nine years later, something like that, you know, it was yeah, it was probably about nine years later. 
for the first, you know, I'm about to get my gun rights back. In my in my head, I thought it was 10 years you have to wait, but it turns out it's only five, and you don't get your gun rights automatically. You have to go to the court and petition them to give you your gun rights, and they're probably going to say no because they're a bunch of bootlicking, gun-grabbing filth. So anyway, um, I'm, I'm mad at this degenerate, depraved, iniquitous, vile mental health system, and I know that my parents are leaning toward that. It started off really when the, I was arguing about, uh, oh, I almost forgot, how, how could I forget this? When I was younger, you know, I'd been to the cycle probably one or two times, and then I, they went to reform school. I got kicked out of reform school for smuggling weed twice. And they actually, the staff, it's quite an interesting story. You know, I basically smuggled weed in, in a puppet. I sold the puppet's bottom. So I said, oh, it's just a stuffed animal. You know, they searched me and all my stuff very carefully, but they didn't put it together that I sold the, the weed into the puppet even though they caught me sneaking a lighter in. I didn't want to sneak the lighter in because I, I didn't want them to be able to feel the public. public. But what's this, you know? So I, I put the, I tried to play off the lighter and they, they found it when they did the search. And uh, I was able to get another lighter there, make a long story short. And while I'm there, you know, I run away from the camp during a, during a therapy session, you know, and I come across some kids and turn out, make a long story short, I took weed from one of them, went back to camp. Turned out that kid was a, child you know probably 13 years old child of one of the staff there he tells his mom yeah this guy stole my weed and my cigarettes you know fucking who tells their parents you know mommy this kid you know he stole he stole my weed and my cigarette he's 13 years old you know completely like i'm just like astonished you know i'm dumbfounded like what the fuck are you talking about like this is how i got caught like really you know anyway so then i get you know the first time they tolerated it because I came clean. They had some snitch rule where everyone was snitching. You got snitched on yourself and everyone snitched on me. And I, you know, kind of admitted it. And I led them to the weed and they felt like, oh, you know, he led us to the weed and he came clean. So they kind of, you know, I was punished for it, but I wasn't kicked out of the camp yet. And so it's called SEDU. You know, if you want to look it up, it's called Surviving SEDU. You know, basically the mental health people did a number on me, you know, and to not consider that with what, whatever happens, happens, to not consider that is a grave, grave mistake, a fatal error. You know, if these people try to say this guy is mentally ill when I'm reasonably upset, you know, the bottom line of whatever I may do in the future is because I'm right and extremely reasonably upset, period. And then there's the fact that they've been fucking with me my whole life. That's why I'm telling you this story. So then I get kicked out of CDU and I get sent to a place called Ascent after being taken to Safe House. You know, and they, they take me to the airport, you know, they put me in shackles, you know, in handcuffs and leg shackles, and they, they wave some fucking thing through the gate. You know, I'm thinking it's my time to escape, but they just throw them, throw them some paperwork, and this is before 9-11, and so I don't, have go, I don't have to go through the mail detector. I get on a plane, I go to northern Idaho, second time in my life I, had, I even saw snow, you know, and it gets like 60 degrees below zero or something like that there. You know, I'm at a scent camp, but you, you know... There was Navy SEALs and stuff at the old, at the sea And at Ascent, there's a bunch of Army guys and things of this nature and, you know, a bunch of redneck, you know, good people. And so anyway, I'm freezing my balls off there and, you know, I basically go through the motions of killing myself because they didn't allow you to write home at all. You know, the first place after you've been there for a while, they, re you know, you can write home and they review your letter. But at Ascent, they didn't let me write home at all. And I said, just to contact, no phone calls, no nothing. So just to contact them, you know, I, I knew that the best chance was to um, go to the psych ward. And at that point, I could try to contact them. So that's probably about the fourth or fifth time, or no, no, that's probably about the third time I was at the psych ward. And I was at the psych ward in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, after being at Ascent, you know, um, further north, I believe, in Idaho. So, and this is, you know, one of the, you know, I'm at Sea-Doo, which is, this is not a coincidence about this, you know, Sea-Doo is close to Orange County and San Bernardino. Not, you know, not extremely close, but close enough. And Orange County has the highest concentration of skinheads in America, at least last time I checked, which is only a couple years ago. And then at um, Northern Idaho, it's by Lake Hayden, not too far away, you know, probably, I don't know, like an hour away or something, which is the biggest skinhead compound, or at least it used to be. I think they shut it down or something in America. So anyway, I'm running out of time, so let me just wrap this up. So I go to fucking uh, the psych ward of Coeur d'Alene. I call my parents. I convince them to take me home. Okay, I've been through a whole lot of shit. Psych ward two times. At this point, this is before I'm even fucking 18. I'd already been to the psych ward at least two times. I've been to the fucking, well, at least three times actually because I've been to the 
the psych ward in Coeur d'Alene, and then I've been to reform school and boot camp, okay? All that before I'm 18. Around the time I'm 19, I go back to the psych ward during my trial for arguing with my ex-girlfriend on the phone and, you know, basically threatening to kill her, I guess you could say. You know, well, I, I, I basically, she, she set me up. Her mom was a police dispatcher. They knew how to set me up. And fucking, she hung up the phone on me when I was very pissed. And I fucking went off on her fucking, uh, uh, uh her pager answer machine. Because her pager takes texts and voice messages. So anyway, I'm over the time. Let me just wrap this up. So since then, you know, I argue around the time I'm 28 or so. I haven't been in psych ward in years. And I argue with my family over them drugging my cousins. You know, I'm like, there's nothing wrong with them. Their, their, their father passed away. That's why they're upset. That's why they're acting strange. I don't see this kind of craziness from them. You know, I don't, I don't see it. You know, they might have dyslexia or some shit like that, but I don't see any fucking mental disorder. And I start showing them all kinds of paperwork about how temporal lobe seizures are purposely dis misdiagnosed. And this guy who got, he got arrested or something for hundreds of cases of misdiagnosed temporal lobe seizures, some, some huge number. And anyway... So they're mad at me about that and they want to make an example to my cousins about, oh, you know, in society you got to take your drugs and they see that I'm going to, you know, that I'm resisting them and they're afraid that I'm going to influence them to not want to take their medicine too. You know, their quote unquote medication, which is bullshit, is poison pills, it's eugenics, population control, see my other videos, psychiatric fucking psychotropic death, cognitive impairment in a fucking package sold to you by Satan. You know, big pharma fucking the pharma cost. Anyway, so... I, my, you know, I'm, I'm mad. I'm talking about conspiracy theory. I'm talking about all this stuff on YouTube. I don't think I'm talking about psychiatry yet, but I'm talking about a lot of things that I'm pissed off. And at that point, I was hungry, you know. Most people don't understand that my parents were doing a lot of the shopping, and then there came a point where they stopped shopping for me, just one day, black. So I'm, I'm and I, I kind of live in the middle of nowhere, so I'm starving, you know. And it's around the time, you know, after this, a couple years later or something, I make the video, piece of chicken, piece of mine. Because I realized that part of the problem with people being stressed out is nutrition. And ironically, one of the classes I took in college was stress and nutrition. Because the two are fucking inevitably related. So, especially when you have a lot of fillers in your food. A moment's fucking, I got text messages and just now. Okay, anyway, let me just wrap this. I'm way, I'm way over the time. I don't even know if they're going to let me upload this whole thing. But they let me upload the 11, 16 minute, 11 minute, 16 second one. So let me wrap this up. So... Make a long story short, I'm upset about something. I go upstairs to my room, and my older brother, like, basically, I go down there, and there's chicken wings cooking in the oven, and I see my older brother eating my chicken wings, you know, and they're, they're, they're you know, they weren't cooked enough. Something we're, we've been arguing about lightweight is them eating my food, what little food that I do have set aside for myself, and them stopping my food before it's done cooking. I like my food well done. And a lot of times they stop it and they, they think I'm gonna burn the house down or something. So they stop it early and it, you know you bite into some food and it, it's cold. It's like sometimes there's a little bit of ice still on it. You know, it might from at first glance, if you don't know better, you might think, oh, it's done cooking, I'll just stop it. But then when you bite into it, it's fucking cold. You know what I'm talking about? So anyway, um, I go down there and then, then I say, you know what, fuck and I'm heated. So I get in the car and I start driving toward town. And then driving to a town, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to town for? It's gonna take me 20 minutes to get there. It'll take them 10, you know, five minutes to get the order, blah, blah, blah. Why wait 25 minutes so I can just go back home and fucking cook it for another 10 minutes and have my fucking food? You know, even though it probably wouldn't have worked out like that, it probably would have been more even than that. But in my mind, that's the logic I did. I come back, you know, and then my little cousin is staring at me, you know, and he has like a staring problem. So I'm like, what are you looking at? And that got them more mad, you know, or I said, I said, it's rude to look at people. I forgot what I said. I said something about, don't look at me like that or something. And then I walk upstairs. My older brother follows me up, you know. Ironically, the same guy who had caused a lot of my anger at that point, you know, one of the main reasons I was upset, comes up. And at that point, I had a lock on the inside of my door. And I had, you know, so I had to, I un opened it. I unlocked it from the inside. He grabbed me and he said, no, I'm going to talk to you because he said, I want to talk to you. I'm like, I don't want to talk right now. When someone says, I don't want to talk right now, and they're starving and pissed off. Leave them the fuck alone. They didn't do it. He grabbed me and I had like a jacket on and I showed, you know, I made videos where the, I show you the tears in my jacket from him grabbing me. And I show you, I showed the cops when they came that, you know, that my lock was broken. My chicken wings were on the ground. The plate was on the ground. C completely collaborated my story. They didn't care. You know, they were intent on taking me to the psych ward. They're a bunch of Kufar, San Martin pigs, Santa Clara County Sheriff pigs. Now, anyway, so I go through, right? 
You know, he, after he does that, blah, 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 make a long story short, I punched him. And since then, I've been to the psych ward fucking probably four or five more times after that, three or four at least, you know, for arguing with my parents. Usually I'd be in my room talking about, I want to kill motherfuckers, but not telling that to anyone. And then my parents would fucking come and confront me and I'd argue with them, but I wouldn't threaten them. Okay, I was venting in my room. So going to the psych ward.